Hey guys, um, I normally don't make videos at night uh, anymore because I get home pretty late, but uh, I think this is pretty important. I want to start off by reading uh, something from the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. Uh, it's called Forming Consciences for Faithful Citizenship. My, uh, my father, my priest, had handed these out uh, I think last week, a couple weeks ago, he did a talk about uh, forming our conscience to be good citizens. So I'm just going to read you two short paragraphs. The church is not indifferent to society. She is attentive to the moral quality of social life, politics, the economy, labor, law, and culture are not simply a secular and worldly reality. The social doctrine of the church helps her be faithful to her mission. It belongs to the church, always and everywhere, to announce moral principles, even about the social order, and to render judgment concerning any human affairs, insofar as the fundamental rights of the human person or the salvation of souls require it. Code of Canon Law 747-2. So Thursday night at a uh, fundraising event, Joe Biden said this. My generic point, and I happen to be a practicing Roman Catholic, my church doesn't even make that argument now. And so we're in a situation where things have changed a lot. But those Republicans have gotten more extreme in their positions. Now, he said that right after he said uh, Senator Lindsey Graham proposed a bill that would ban abortion after 15 weeks of gestation nationwide. My church doesn't even make that argument now. So... Obviously, to every Catholic watching, that's a lie. Uh, but Father Frank Pavone from um, the National Director of Priests for Life said in response, of course, the Catholic Church never justifies the killing of an innocent person by abortion. So that's for all those non-Catholics who are wondering if the church changed her position after 2,000 years. And... Um, another way you could tell Joe Biden was lying, like I always said, just check to see if his lips are moving. You know, I've been a political nerd since I'm 14, I'm 56, and Joe Biden's been a part of the political system that whole time. And he's a liar. He's a liar, and he is a very wicked person who needs to repent. And, you know, he goes around saying he's a practicing Catholic. Well, Joe... Going to Mass doesn't make you a Catholic any more than going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. So, for the record, to be a Catholic, you must submit to the authority of the Church. That is our Pope and our Magisterium and all the teachings of the Church, her doctrines and her dogmas. And Pope Francis has recently said abortion is the gravest of mortal sins. If you have an abortion, you're automatically excommunicated. That's how wicked the church sees it. So Joe Biden is lying again. Not only is he lying about our church, our church's position, but he's lying and saying 15 weeks is extreme. There's only seven countries in the entire world that allow abortions after 15 weeks. Think about that. I think there's like 196 countries in the world and only seven of them allow 50 abortion after 15 weeks and that's all Lindsey Graham is asking for you know it doesn't take a brain surgeon to know that at 15 weeks there's a developed unborn child we've all seen ultrasounds this is 2022 this is in 1973 we know Unless you're a complete science denier. You don't need to be a brain surgeon to know that's a baby. But speaking of brain surgeon, one of the greatest brain surgeons who ever lived, Dr. Ben Carson, has stated that they routinely do surgery 
on unborn babies as young as 12 weeks. And because the babies feel pain, they have to give them anesthesia before they do the surgery. So again, Joe Biden, Biden is a liar and he doesn't care. He does not care about human life. He made his career when he came in to office in the early 70s and we had our mid 70s. We had left Vietnam. We had promised the Vietnamese that helped us that we knew we were going to get slaughtered by the communists. We would take them out, but it would cost, you know, it would cost a lot of money. But we promised them that we would take them out. And Joe Biden, one of his first votes was against that. He's like, we don't owe those people nothing. And thousands of Vietnamese were slaughtered because of politicians like Joe Biden. That's why I was not surprised when he did the same to our friends in Afghanistan. When we had thousands, like I think it was upwards of 30,000 uh, Vietnamese, like helping with us, uh, you know, spying with it, working with our special forces, translators, you know, showing where to go. These people knew they would be slaughtered if we ever left. And we gave them a promise we wouldn't. And Joe Biden left them and they were slaughtered. Women, children, babies, tortured and slaughtered because Joe Biden did not keep America's word. And not only that, what even surprised me, I, I wasn't surprised that he left our Afghanistan friends behind, but what even surprised me, and I guess I shouldn't have been, was he left Americans behind. And of course he lied and said he wasn't going to, and a week later he did. And still to this day, you know, I have, you know, I talked to people, I had Dale Comstock, a uh, Delta Force operator here. There's a lot of special forces guys that are trying to help get Americans out still that Joe Biden abandoned. This guy has no regard for human life whatsoever. So for him to call himself a Catholic is an abomination. So me and you need to use this as motivation to become better Catholics to go to confession more, to get to the Eucharist more, to live like saints. Because when the world sees Joe Biden saying he's a Catholic, and they're like, what's up with Catholics? But if they see me and you living out our faith in real time, in real ways, they'll be like, nah, Joe Biden's not a Catholic. I've seen real Catholics. So let this motivate you to be a stronger Catholic and as hard as it is to pray for this evil person, we need to pray for him. We need to love our enemies and he's an enemy. He's an enemy to the millions of unborn children that are slaughtered every day. And he's an enemy to religious freedom. And he's an enemy, he's an enemy to the basic American way, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So, um, there's a couple things we can do. Most importantly, pray and try and be the best Catholic you can be. And the only way we can do that is by the grace of God. And the way we release the grace of God is by going to confession and we're getting that sin pushed away. Because sin blocks the grace of God and, and keeps us locked up. So let's become better Catholics ourselves. Let's pray for them. And then you've seen, you know... I just read the, what the Catholic Church teaches. We need to be involved in politics. Yes, we need to vote pro-life. There's one party that's the party of death. They're fighting to kill babies. The other party is fighting to save babies. You don't need to be a brain surgeon to, to know. You need to re vote Republican in November and to stop this. And then financially, we need to support companies that are pro-life. So like I always tell you, you know, it might sound cliche. I've been saying it so long, but I mean it. I, I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. If you're buying or selling real estate, you need to go to realestateforlife.org. And you're guaranteed a pro-life Catholic real estate company and a pro-life Christian, probably Catholic, maybe Protestant. But it'll be a pro-life Christian realtor with more experience than the average realtor and more ethical than the average realtor. So you'll get professionalism and you will get experience. But most importantly, you won't be giving your money to a woke company that supports abortion. 
So God bless. Stay Catholic.